Hey everybody, welcome back to Left Paw Gaming. Today we've got some more of my walkthrough footage of Final Fantasy 16. Last video, we helped out our old friend Sir Wade and his group, Guardians of the Flame, fight against the Black Shields to get rid of them from the Rosarian area. This video, we finally get to meet Uncle Byron and find out what we're going to do to get to the next Mother Crystal. Let's jump in. Okay, it looks like we're back. We wiped out the Black Shields, took out that knight. That was a... Some of these little boss fights are <laughs> underwhelming, but and how that's all right. long has my uncle been funding you and your comrades' endeavors? <laughs> Since the beginning. Lord Byron was the first person I turned to after forming the Guardians. Very nice. And had I known of this tunnel back then, I wouldn't almost have been hanged by the city guard for trying to sneak over the wall. I suppose a formal request for an audience would have appeared suspicious. And appearances must be maintained. Of course Lord of they Ice do. Regency to catch wind of Lord Byron's involvement in our movement, they'd seize his estate and send him to the gallows, where he would be of no use to anyone. And so, though it sickens him to the soul, he plays the part of the loyal Lord, knowing that one wrong move might prove his downfall. Dang, seriously? Is why he remains ever vigilant. Don't be surprised if he refuses you an audience. Especially since you're famously dead. <laughs> right. I will have to think of a way to prove that I am neither wraith nor wrongdoer. I might have something which could help with the latter. Ooh. Is this going to be another one of those ribbons it's the or mark whatever? Of the Guardians. Yeah. Display it, and those who love Rosaria will know where your loyalties lie. Perfect. A new seal. Okay, they're called seals. Don't mind me. I shall wear it with pride. Be sure that you do. I don't want my men attacking you again. Unless you deserve it. <laughs> nice, Sir Wade. If only Sir Tyler could have been here to see you. Or the Lord Commander. Lord Commander was still here. Things would be quite a bit different, you, I'm sure. Wade. If there is ever anything you need. I know. Go on now, my lord. Because he would have done a lot of things differently to try to help the area. Been more of a leader to help out Sir Wade and everything. Lord Commander was still around. Lots of things would change. There'd be a big rally around Clive. And probably a lot more people on Clive's side right now. Rossfield Manor. How accommodating. Do you really think they believe we are who we say we are? <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. I guess my uncle believes we're imposters here to rob him. And means to string us up himself. Oh boy. Are they really being circled right now? Or those just heavy footsteps. Heavy footsteps. You walking in brandishing this big old axe? Jesus. Imagine my surprise when I was told my nephew had come to visit. This isn't turning out how we expected, is it? Oh no, he recognized him. Clive Rosfield died long ago. That's why he did that head shake. He's recognizing him. And for uttering his name here, you shall pay with your tongue. What is he you doing? Would mock me as well. I'm not mocking you. It is I, Sir Crandall of Camelot, loyal servant to her serene holiness. Oh, maybe he's doing something only his uncle would know that he would do. Shard. That's why it's really weird. <laughs> Madam, thou vile sorcerer, for thy crimes against church and crown, I shall have thy head. Yeah, he's recognizing him. Curse the infectious flax wench. <laughs> Even in death, must thou plague me still? Very well. 
I shall open the gates of hell, that thou might see thy charge once more. He's crying. Look at him. He knows. He knows it's the real Clive now. That's awesome. <laughs> Just silly things like Vargal. that. You're still the finest matter in the twins. Oh. oh, Clive, my dear boy, it's really you. <laughs> Man, you know, you can never really tell, like, how much somebody misses somebody, you know, until they're given a chance to see that person again, or especially in Clive's instance. A favor to ask Uncle Byron. Rutherford, inform the kitchens. There'll be guests. We dine immediately. But Uncle. <laughs> you can't very well regale me with the tale of your miraculous preservation on an empty stomach. Go on, sit. <laughs> it definitely turned around. See that you use the good plates, Rutherford. The good plates. Only the finest for my boy, Clive. So you arrived late to one of her cullings, did you? Since becoming viceroy, Annabella has been a constant thorn in Rosaria's side, but these atrocities are a new low. Something has changed. Quite what? I don't know, but the woman we knew is gone, and a monster sits in her place. That's sad, man. For better or worse, I've been charged with governing this town, and thus must maintain the illusion of obedience. <laughs> it's all I can do to aid Wade and his merry band of revolutionaries. So he's told us. You have risked much for Rosaria. Our nation will be forever in your debt. I don't want that. I want the nation back. Like, come on. It has been 20 years, Clive. The nation your father and your forefathers fought to defend is no more. Perhaps it would be otherwise had I the courage of my brother. All right, if it's a ship you require. <laughs> it's been a very a quiet scene, I feel, have. man. I have a galley in no background music or anything. Her cargo. She can be outfitted for the voyage in a matter of weeks. So you believe us, then? About everything? Believe you? Ha! Only a fool would believe even half of the things you claim. <laughs> Until tonight, only a fool would have believed my nephew still lived. And besides, I have it on good authority that Clive is telling the truth. What? Whose authority? On your own, of course. You've always been a terrible liar. <laughs> Is that true? It's not untrue. Nice. Let's say no more about it, eh? It wouldn't do to linger on my nephew's greatest failing. <laughs> He's the typical uncle type, man. Always Something teasing. I cannot believe, though. Letting you get away with stuff your dad wouldn't. <laughs> always such a good boy but now you're quite the outlaw yeah you know out here just doing our thing which if i'm not mistaken would make me an outlaw's uncle <laughs> why then who shall we pillage first Rutherford, fetch me my cutlass what's going on with jill this will be fun She's starting to struggle with her own demons, probably. Worried about her place in all this and what she's done. That's my assumption, at least, but we'll see. Over there. Go on. She's a fine ship, isn't she? Once outfitted, she'll bear us across the boiling sea to Drustinus in the space of three days. Nice, that's a short journey. Nice little sea it's voyage, though. Mom. 
monsters. When I served the Iron Kingdom, I, I did so because I saw no other choice. Oh, she's reflecting in because that's where we're heading. We're going because up against the people that she that was Lash would not move imprisoned them. by. They turned it on those who could. Her chance for revenge. Is she deciding if she wants so it, though? I became their puppet. I let them pull my strings. Telling myself it was not my hand that swung the sword, but another's. I removed myself from the truth so I wouldn't feel the pain it caused. And before I knew it, I no longer felt anything. Anything at all. She numbed herself to do what she needed to to survive and protect others, you know? I had become a monster. Jill. These two have both lived some sad lives since that day at Phoenix Gate, I don't want you know? To be a monster. Clyde, do you understand? I want to choose a different path, a better path. To live on my own terms. But before I can do that, I need to come to terms with my past. Then let's get it done. And when you do... I'll be standing there with you, just as you stood with me. Boom. Thank you, Clive. I must atone for my sins. Only then, when it's done, will the monster cease to be. Just promise me that you won't die with it. Now, let's get some sleep. The journey back to Bendemir is long, and there is much to tell the others. Well, we know that Jill has ulterior motives now for heading back to the place where she was kept a prisoner and only unleashed when they needed Shiva to do things. Alright, we're brought back here. Here be monsters! This is a new mission we're about to start Nobody here. Knows what awaits us in the Iron Kingdom. But Vivian could probably make an educated guess. Okay, we'll chat with Vivian some. She's gonna give us the lay of the land and where we're heading. So we know what to expect. It seems that's what her part is here. The new hideaway. Back again, Lord Rosfield. I'm touched that you should find me such good company. <sighs> it is not your company, but your counsel that I seek on this occasion. Ah, oh, ever the charmer. <laughs> what will it be today, then? The Iron Kingdom. I need to know what to expect. You'll soon be setting sail for Drake's breath, then, I take it. The mother crystal that rises from the boiling sea. There was a time when a true-blooded Rosarian had only to brave the waves to visit it. But then the Iron Blood made their move. History lesson time. Here we go. All those black areas As are where the blight know, the is Iron now. The Kingdom rules over the islands to the west of Storm. Or rather, its church does. But this is not the pragmatic approach to state religion employed by the Holy Empire to manipulate the masses. No. The Iron Kingdom is the literal embodiment of the crystalline orthodoxy. And so, if one is to understand it, one must start there. As the name implies, the Orthodoxy holds the Mother Crystal sacred, and they do not take kindly to heathens plundering the objects of their worship for the means to fill wash tubs and light lamps with frivolous feats of magic. Indeed, the faithful consider ether a sinful thing, a poison no less. And to them, they leverage that poison. Is an instrument of evil. 
albeit one they have proven only too happy to turn against their enemies. Right. Kind of. Some eighty years ago, in Northern Storm, Drake's kind of hypocrites they are. Soon after, in pursuit of Ether, and with the blight at their backs, the Northern territories descended upon the Grand Duchy of Rosaria. And when the shields of the flame marched north to meet them, the Iron Kingdom spied an opportunity. A few short days later, the Crusaders landed on the island of Mount Drastanus, home of Drake's breath, and plucked it from the Duchy's grasp. Rosaria tried to reclaim it, of course, but to no avail. I doubt more than a handful of Duchy men have set foot on its shores in your lifetime. Interesting. Nor are they like to again under the Empire's stewardship, meaning the Iron Blood will keep their island, and with it, the foothold they need to march on mainland soil when next they spy an opportunity. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of the history lessons in this game. The Definitely builds the world out really nice. The Iron Blood's worship and their gateway to the continent, making Drustinus the holiest of holy grounds from which the Orthodox Crusade shall one day sail forth to claim the remaining Mother Crystals, or die trying. No, oh, it's definitely going to be or die my trying. Father and my grandfather both traded blows with the Iron Blood for control of Drake's breath. Had things unfolded differently at Phoenix Gate, we would have sent our entire fleet against them. But instead, really? they sent their fleet against Rosaria, sacked the capital, killed the men and captured the women including Jill I'd say you'd be forgiven for wanting a little revenge Clive oh well I appreciate your endorsement <laughs> my only aim is to destroy the mother crystal but thank you all the same not much else to do here let's see if Jill's ready so we've definitely been doing a lot of a lot of exposition in the last like half hour of this game. A lot of uh, world building, pieces moving. Not a lot of action, but definitely a lot of story being carried through the dialogue, and planning, and the history lesson, of course, so. of course, of course. Of <laughs> course. I'm good with words. When you told me you had to come to terms with your past, you weren't talking about destroying Drake's breath, were you? No, she gonna destroy the clowns that did that to her. No. I spoke of Imran. The leader of the crystalline orthodox. The man who made me do all those unspeakable things. I'm going to kill him. The last truly what unspeakable thing. I need to do to put the past behind me. What I need... to move forward. And I know that I can do it. If you're there beside me. Always. And I'll be beside you, too. We'll bring down the Mother Crystal together. All while Sid looks on. We'll make him proud. The stage is set. It's time to go. Alright guys, we're going to cut this video off right here. It's a great spot for us to end it. We did some world building, some storytelling in these last uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, Uncle Byron Rossfield is in now. He believes that Clive is a real deal. And now we are set to go to Drake's Breath and destroy another Mother Crystal. But to see that, <laughs> you guys have to join us in the next video because things are going to get crazy. We're going to see a different side of Jill. We're going to see the side of Jill that's a little bit more bent on revenge. She's not happy going back to where we have to go back to, but she's there for certain purposes besides the Mother Crystal. Honestly, playing through that section, the Mother Crystal was second to her. <laughs> she just wanted all this done and to move on so that she can truly rebuild her life and live the way she deserves. So as usual, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.